Hi, welcome back to another episode of the Rotator Cup Expert. I'm Dr. Daniel Orcutt. We're going to talk today about rehab after shoulder replacement. Donna B. mentioned a question about this in the comments on the uh, YouTube channel. And so I'm trying to go through this and what the restrictions are and why it's important. Why are there restrictions at all? Um, so please, if you do like this channel, uh, subscribe to the channel, like it. Uh, and again, if you have any questions, anything you, you would like me to answer, uh, please feel free to ask in the comments and we'll get videos out for that. Okay. So Donna B, this is for you. Okay. So when we have a shoulder replacement, we replace the ball in the socket, the ball in the socket with metal and plastic. And so the question is when, when you do that, so what restrictions or what, what's, what's PT like afterwards? So the biggest thing about PT afterwards is usually actually a little bit simpler uh, than actually having a rotator cuff repair, which is interesting because you think it'd be harder. It's a little bit simpler um, and there's not as, quite as many restrictions unless, the caveat is unless they actually repair the rotator cuff before they actually do the rotator, before they do the replacement. If they repair the rotator cuff before they do the replacement or while they're doing the replacement, because that sometimes happens. If you have a small rotator cuff tear, some surgeons would feel comfortable fixing the rotator cuff and then actually doing the, then actually doing the shoulder replacement. So the key thing in, uh, in restrictions after shoulder surgery, specifically after rotator, uh, specifically after replacement surgery, is we have to protect the subscapularis. So if we look at this diagram, this is the subscapularis. So if we, it's a little bit busy, but this is the ball, and this is the socket, and the subscapularis comes across it, the ball and socket, and it actually attaches to the very outside of the ball here. So when we do shoulder surgery, specifically the uh, replacement, we actually release this by th this subscapularis, which is one of the rotator cuff muscles, release this off so we can get to it. Now, again, this is typically, occasionally, you are able to actually cheat above and below the, the subscapularis, so you don't have to re release it. That's unusual, but there are a few people who do that uh, in practice, um, but typically, we're gonna take this subscap off, we're gonna do our surgery, then we're gonna repair it. Now there's a few different ways we can take it off. We can, we can release it from the tendon or we can release it with the bone. And depending on uh, your preferred technique, that's how the surgeon would do it. Um, and so it's important to know that that's actually the tendon, the, the major tendon that's gonna be um, affected by the shoulder surgery uh, because we take it off and then put it back. So the, the subscapularis does two things. Well, it does does it, uh, the subscapularis uh, is an active internal rotator of the shoulder or of the of the arm. So it attaches here. If you can imagine, if the muscle is here and the tendon is here, when the muscle contracts, you bring your arm in. And so we want to minimize contraction of that muscle after surgery because we don't want to pull the ro the repair off, right? And then we want to minimize external rotation because if you ex externally ret rotate too far, if you external rotate if you externally rotate too far, you actually can pull it off as well. So those are the two really key things um, to minimize after shoulder replacement. And that's why, because we don't want you to pull in hard because that's going to stress it. We want, don't want to get stretched out because that's going to stretch it. So typically what I say for my patients is it's okay to go to neutral, which means it's okay for the fist to go forward, the hand to go forward. I don't want it to go beyond forward for about six weeks. Um, and depending on the person in therapy, we may adjust that, but in general, in general terms. And I don't want them to try to actively pull their arm in. I don't want them to push that against things to pull in because that could strain the repair, okay? The, only, the other thing that we can talk about is when we do the exposure, where we go up, release it, and we go over. This is called the rotator cuff interval. Rotator cuff interval is between two tendons of the rotator cuff, the supraspinatus and the subscapularis. So that's why when we release this off, we can get to the, to the um, to the joint. Now, the, if the supraspinatus is torn, that's where we might repair a, a, a small tear of the supraspinatus before doing a shoulder replacement. The other thing we need that you need to know about it is the biceps. The biceps is here and actually comes up and goes in between those two and attaches the top of the socket. That's the long head of the biceps. Another head of the biceps goes over here, which is not particularly important. Um, so we most always uh, when we do a rotator, when we do a shoulder replacement, we do a biceps tenodesis. Now, most of us, when we do a biceps tenodesis in the setting of a shoulder replacement, we actually release the biceps here 
and we release it here and we tie it to the pectoralis major. So the pec major comes across and the pec major is also bring is an also is an internal rotator of the arm. So the pec major, so we might we'll repair it here. So when we repair the biceps, we may actually have some restrictions as far as how much you can use your biceps, right? We may not want you to be actively loading your biceps for a while because we want to protect that bicep. We want to protect that repair, the biceps tendesis here. So those are probably the two most important things is that we want to probably minimize how much biceps you use because we want to protect the biceps tendesis and we want to minimize how much you internal rotate forcibly and external rotate stretching wise or passively because those are the mo those are the motions that are going to most severely stress that subscapularis which we don't want to do um if we if there is a failure of the subscapularis repair and it gets comes off then it can very easily create a dislocating total shoulder right because if you can imagine if the rotator cuff is a cuff of muscle intended that goes around the ball now you have a new ball but it's still a ball and you have a new socket but it's still a socket if you have stuff in the front subscapularis stuff on the top supraspinatus infraspinatus stuff on the back teres minor so that kind of cuffs it so it can't go anywhere but if you take the subscapular off the front then boop you can come out the front so that's why i want to protect the subscapularis so that's why it's important to for us to repair the subscapularis now this is different than when we have a reverse total shoulder oftentimes the way the reverse total shoulder is put in is that the subscapularis is not necessary because the socket and the ball are so tightly aligned that it doesn't need any of the rotator cuff to help to hold it in the socket in general. Um, so reverse is different in that there may not be any real specific restrictions uh, after having a reverse total shoulder. Now there's another video in back, uh, and we'll a link to it, uh, that does talk about shoulder replacement and reverse total shoulder replacement and why you might do one or the other. Um, so we'll link to that uh, in, in, the, um, in the descriptions here. Um, but and we're talking just talking about shoulder replacement, that's a, what we call an anatomic shoulder replacement, the subscapular has to be there. Reverse total shoulder subscap doesn't necessarily have to be there, but we usually still try and repair it because it probably makes the reverse total shoulder function a little bit better. Anyway, I hope this helps. Uh, and if you have any questions, any thoughts, um, please leave them down in the comments. If you have any new things you want me to talk about, please leave it down in the comments. Please like this and subscribe, and we'll see you on the next episode. Thank you.